Hello! Today we are wrapping up my Q3 favorites and stats. So I like to check in every quarter and just sort of recap. I mean, I read a lot of books. So I like to recap what I feel like the true standouts from the quarter were, my favorites, things that I would highly recommend to folks. And then I'm also a little stats nerd, so I also enjoy sharing some stats of how the reading went with you in this video. So I'll timestamp it of when we're covering the best books versus when we're doing stats. Also, Hastings is rubbing his face on the tripod. So you'll watch me slip and slide here a little bit. But let's start with the books. The interesting thing is I think I've talked about all of these in vlogs. So you can see my real time reaction reading them and my real time review. Oh, I guess there's two that's not true of. Okay, so actually there's two. So let's talk about those two a little bit more. I actually did pretty much reviews of them within my end of the month wrap ups when I talked about them. So I'm Glad My Mom Died by Jeanette McCurdy and Babel by RF. Kwong. So I'm glad my mom died by Jeanette McCurdy. I did a pretty extensive discussion of in my August wrap up. So I will link to that. I give five stars for all time favorite books and four and a half stars to favorite books of the year. I gave this a five star because this is one of my all time favorite celebrity memoirs that I've read. It is just it's a really difficult book. It is not an easy read. But I felt like she had a very provocative title that she spent the entire book kind of proving why she felt that way in a very compelling and understandable way. I think that if you can deal with all the content warnings in this, which is a lot, I mean, substance abuse, parental abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse, spiritual abuse, I mean, just name it, it's in here. Uh, if you can handle all of that, then I think that this is a really thought provoking and really well done book. And I think it would make a very, very good book club book. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I did not give this five stars. I gave this four and a half. Let me correct that. So I gave this four and a half because I did feel like the back half of it was a little weaker than the front half. But it was still I would I would still stand by it's probably one of my favorite celebrity memoirs I've read. And I just think it's a really compelling read. There's a reason it's a bestseller. And I hope that we get more books from her that are not just memoir because I think her actual writing is really lovely. So I would love to read something else from her. The other book that I did not vlog, but you can see at least some recaps over on TikTok. I went into my whole thing in my September wrap up of why that has been infuriating, but Babel by RF Kwong, I also gave four and a half stars to, and you can see more detailed thoughts I have on TikTok. Basically, what I love about this book, and oh, I should also mention I did a full review in my September wrap up, so I can point you there. Basically, what I love about this book is to me, this feels like a Victorian sort of Dickensian coming of age novel in the vein of Great Expectations. But if there's magic, and if it is seriously interrogating the colonialist and racist underpinnings of the British Empire in that era. So I, I just love this as a project. I don't think that this is going to be a book for everyone. It does not surprise me if some people are not into it. But for me, that is what I love about it. So that is why I love it. But um, yeah, this was really successful. It will d break your little heart in, in pieces. But what can you expect from Rebecca? She just lives to torture us apparently. Well, hey there, this is Mara from the future. I messed up. Uh, I did not do a good job of prepping my my recording the day I did it and uh, I missed an entire book. So as the video progresses you will see slightly wrong stats for my 4.5 and 5 stars because I was omitting one of the key books and that is Pretty Dead Queens by my friend Alexa Dunn which also I'm sorry for the naked hardback which does have like this cool embossing on it but my copy arrived without without a cover so I'm waiting for the new one to come back but uh yeah so Pretty Dead Queens is 4.5 stars it is a YA mystery and I think that this is the best thing Alexa has done so far. I think that this is like a super fun secrets from the past, small town mystery, and it's a very cheeky play on Murder, She Wrote, basically. So I just think that this was really well done. It's a little slow burn in the front part of it, which I was okay with because I was interested in sort of the town and getting the lay of the land. But just know that it's a little slow. But then once the body drops, you know, things really get to get in from that point. So if you like a YA mystery and you like a lot of the trope combos that I like, I think you'll enjoy this. This was very much up my alley in terms of it did have secrets from the past without doing a dual timeline, which is not always my favorite. So anyway, I thought that this was absolutely fantastic and I gave it four and a half stars. Sorry that I was just so disorganized on the day of filming and that I accidentally missed this one, but 
definitely in my 4.5 star cohort for Q3. And then these are my other four and a half star books. So in this quarter, I gave out five four and a half stars and two five stars. So my other four and a half star books are in vlogs that you can check out. So I have Your Life and Other Stories by Ted Chiang. This is in my short story vlog and I just continue to love I gave both I've given both of Ted Chiang's collections four and a half stars I love him as a short story writer clearly he's one of my favorites great this is I would describe this as speculative slash sci-fi literary short stories so if you are a literary reader looking to get more into sci-fi or a sci-fi reader looking to get more into literary fiction I think this could be a great option Nettle and Bone by T. Kingfisher was maybe my surprise four and a half star of the quarter because I wasn't expecting to love this as much as I did but I absolutely love the tone of this it's somewhere between dark fairy tale fantasy and lighthearted road trip fantasy. It not everybody's gonna like that balance. Like I think it's a little hit or miss. But for me, it was a total hit. And I can't wait to read more T. Kingfisher. This is one that was in a weekend mood reading vlog that I did. And then You Made a Fool of Death with Your Beauty by Akweke Amezi. They have written a bunch of books, most notably, I think Pet, which is middle grade. But this was my first outing with them. And I love this as a fresh version of a contemporary romance. Um, and I talked about this in my I can you judge a book by its cover vlog. So those were the four and a half. I then had two five stars, both of which are pretty heavy reads and pretty difficult reads. So I would just tell you to be sure you're in the right mindset to read either of these. But Her Body and Other Parties by Carmen Maria Machado is one of the best short story collections I have ever, ever read. Basically, this is thematically an exploration of the dark sides of patriarchy, in essence. So there's a lot of darkness in here, but I pretty much loved all of the stories. I definitely had ones I liked better than others. And I have found out that some people really do not like that SVU short story that I actually really loved, but I tend to really like experimental form in short story. So for me, this was definitely a hit if you're looking for that kind of theme. And then if you're also okay with a lot of experimental short stories, I think this could be a good fit for you. Oh, I should say that was in my that was also in my short story vlog. Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This was in my tournament of books vlog where I let you guys do like this bracket of all these recommendations I had gotten. So you guys picked my TBR. And in the nonfiction division, my patrons picked Know My Name by Chanel Miller. And I will refer you to that video because this was a very emotional read for me. It is a very difficult read, a very difficult story that made me weep. But I'm glad some I'm glad that they pushed me to read this because it was definitely worth worthy of the tears that I cried over it. But this was a lot. So just know that. But those were my two five stars. So for the quarter, I had a total of seven, four and a half or five star books. Pretty typical for me. And overall, I had a pretty strong quarter. So with that being said, let's segue into some stats, shall we? Okay, so for July through September 2022, I read 65 books, 56 of which I owned nine of which I did not. I paid for 52.31% of the books that I read. And the average amount I paid for those books was $6.06. I need to get a better formula so that it's excluding my ones I got for free uh, so that it's not bringing that average down, but I haven't done that yet. Uh, I read a total of 20,173 pages. Oh my gosh. Hastings. And the average length of book I read was 311 pages. The average age of book I read was five years and the average amount of time it had been on my TBR was nine months. Two biggest categories of places I got books was Amazon and publisher. Not surprising considering I'm a Kindle reader and I read ARCs, which are advanced reader copies. So those tend to be my two highest sources of books. That also explains why the highest uh, year of book that I read is 2022, because I tend to read a lot of front lists so that I can read ARCs and not anything before 1990s. So I didn't do a good job of reading any classics this quarter. Genre wise, my biggest was definitely fantasy kind of surprising, uh, followed by speculative romance, followed by mystery, and a good melange of others beyond that. So pretty typical mix with maybe a little more fantasy than normal. Unsurprisingly, most of the books I read were by women because that just tends to be the way it goes. 
Uh, and this quarter I fell a little short of my goal of reading half books uh, by or about people like me versus not like me. Uh, a little more weighted towards like me this quarter, though overall I think I'm still weighted towards not like me for the year. So there's that. Uh, only a couple of audiobooks, I think two audiobooks this quarter, so not much, uh, but more YA middle grade than I normally read, so that was up a little bit. More books in a series than not this quarter, which makes sense. I do read, if you're a genre fiction reader, you do, do often end up reading in series, so more of those than not. More repeat authors than new to me authors, but still actually a pretty healthy mix there, you know. I try to be good about branching out a little bit and trying new people. And then finally, my average rating for this quarter was 3.45. And if you look at the distribution, definitely more weighted towards the three, three and a half, four. That makes sense. That's where I like to be. We have a few outliers on the upper and lower end of the bell curve, but that is about accurate. And then, oh goodness, I can't remember off the top of my head the exact numbers. I'm going to put them up here, but I did do my TBR change totals, and I think I'm actually up on my TBR for the quarter as of now, but I'm still down, I believe, negative 11 for the year on my TBR. So over the year, we're still doing good at trying to have less books on my TBR by the end of it than I had at the beginning. But for the quarter, we took a couple of steps back once I'd actually, I had to go back and add in a few ebooks to the mix. So I believe in myself, I think we can keep it negative for the year, but we will see. And with that, I think that that is my Q3 wrap up. I like to check in with you guys. I hope you guys enjoy getting checked in with. Let me know how your reading has been for the last few months. And I think that will do it for me. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social meds if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today. And I will just talk to you soon.